The Lord be with you. A, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Now Jesus said to his disciples, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, is like a treasure buried in a field, which a person finds and he hides it again. And out of joy goes out and sells all that he has to buy that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes out, sells all that he has, and buys it. The Gospel of the Lord. Amen. Please be seated. You know, we live, uh, we live in a world of, of smart. You know, we've got smart phones and, and, and smart cars, and I, I got a smart watch. It'll tell me if I'm an AFib or not. And my cardiologist is here today. I want to announce I'm in regular sinus rhythm. Thank you very much. <laughs> And we got we got all, all we got all kinds of things that are really very intelligent on their own. We got smart Alex. We got smart people. We got uh, Maxwell Smart. All the smarts in the world. And I do not want to put smart down. Smart is good. Smart is wonderful. Uh, you know we're hearing a lot of people moaning and groaning today about the elites. Well, I just had a cardiac ablation about three or four years ago, I wanted an elite doctor to work on that. I wanted someone who knew what they were doing, one who could do it with their eyes closed. So there's nothing wrong with having the very best you can find if it's going to take care of you. And so smart really is kind of wonderful, and especially with what we've got right now with with all the intelligent appliances and, and algorithms that are at our fingertips. I can remember when I was a a graduate student at Indiana University, and I was working on my thesis, uh, going to the card catalog and spending hours and hours and hours looking just for one quote. Today, all I gotta say is, Siri, find it for me. <laughs> and she does, and she does. It's absolutely amazing. She is smart. She's also a robot. <laughs> she doesn't exist. And if you think, Siri is something. Check out chat GPT. Check out what's coming out with artificial intelligence. I've been told, and, 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 and I, there's a part of me that actually believes it, that this is probably the greatest revolution since the, the wheel or since the discovery of fire, even much, much greater than what we had the revolution with computers recently, because now this is, a, this is an intelligence can, to, can teach itself and all the knowledge of the world can be put inside that, and it grows in its intelligence all the time. This is this has the possibility to be utterly wonderful and totally terrible, depending. I don't know if you saw the 60 Minutes piece a couple of uh, uh, weeks ago when, when uh, the, the uh, uh, interlocutor was talking to the people who, who formed the chat GPT, and, and they, he gave them a, a quote from, um, from Hemingway. It was one of his very famous quotes. It says, for sale, baby shoes never worn. And then they asked the uh, chat GPT to write a story about that. Within 3.4 seconds, it had a short story about a mother who lost her child. And it was, a, it was a beautifully written, heartfelt story. They said, okay now, Siri, put it in poem form. And it came back in another two seconds in iambic pentameter. It's amazing what this can do. It's... it's Marvelous and utterly frightening at exactly the same time. Uh, I, I don't know if you saw this, but on the internet about, about a month ago, I, I saw the, the president. And the president was, was speaking. And the president said, come December, I have made an executive order and the military draft will now be reinstalled. And my jaw dropped until I came to discover it wasn't the president. It was his voice, it was his visage, 
It was his manner of speaking, but every last word was a lie. Because it wasn't him, it was, a, it was a robot speaking through him. These are incredible powers. And in the wrong hands, there's not a doubt in our mind, <sighs> what's going to happen? And so we've got to pay attention, I would think, with what God is saying to us today, because I think it's one of the most important lessons we need to learn today. We have never been so smart, ever. But I'm not quite sure, especially after seeing how we have been treating and handling climate change in our world, how wise we are. How wise we are. We live in a world of instant gratification. We want something, we get it right now, immediately. When I was a kid, I used to say, boy, I wish they would invent, because instant coffee had just come out, I wish they would invent instant algebra. <laughs> well, they did. They did. Oh, and if I want to have my little dopamine fix, all I got to go is on my and start surfing YouTube from now until the towels come home and or chi, or or, or uh, I don't do TikTok, I don't. But but I'm told once you get into it, you can't get out of it because it it feeds that little dopamine feed. The, the difficulty is when you come down, you go down below baseline. It's not a very good thing. We are living in a world right now where we want it and we want it now. I want what I want when I want it. Well, that may be just fine, except it's not going to pay the world's best dividends. And so today, what is God asking us to look at? Not just knowledge, not just smarts, especially not just information. What we're called to look at today is, is wisdom, sapience, sagacity. Now, there's lots of, of definitions about, about what wisdom is, but it's, it's usually always dealing with doing something. The ability to, to do something, either, either personally or collectively as a community. And, 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 it, and it, it does obviously take in information. Information is very, very important. But it also takes in experience understanding, common sense. What wisdom is willing to do is to forsake the immediate gratification for a much deeper, more profound goal. It's very smart to be a day trader, but not always very wise. If you want to take that last, that first thousand dollars, I always tell the kids, put it in your Roth IRA in the S&P 500 and don't look at it for 60 years. That's a little wisdom advice. It means it's going to take a little bit longer, but it self-transcends. It doesn't feed the ego immediately for what I want. It asks for us to, to hold off, to delay the gratification for something deeper, something more important. You know, knowledge gave us the atom bomb. Wisdom asks us, what do we do with it? Now, with the movie Oppenheimer coming out right now, there's, there are people who are starting to ask the question, did we really need to bomb Hiroshima and Nagasaki? Uh, I don't dare to be wise enough to begin to answer that question. Truman said he went to his death believing that he absolutely did the wise thing, the best thing. But what, what, what we're not sure of right now is, are we going to have the wisdom? Is the world going to have the wisdom to never ever ever use it again and if we don't have the wisdom that power that we have at our fingertips obviously can destroy us so the great challenge for today is is can we be wise people we will have all the information in the world but how are we going to use it could we use it for good or evil Obviously, obviously, God today is pushing for wisdom. Solomon, you know, in his dream, is asked by God, what do you want? 
I'm going to give you whatever you want. You want to have power over your enemies? Do you want to be the strongest nation? Do you want fame? Do you want fortune? What do you want? They just did a, a recent uh, survey of Generation Z kids, and they asked them, what do they want? And 65% said, I want to be rich. I want to be famous. I, I was teaching a middle, a middle school class at the end of last year, and I asked them, what, what, what do you want to be when you grow up? What, what, what is your great goal? What is your great long-time desire? And one kid raised his hand and he said, I want to be an influencer. I said, what's an influencer? <laughs> I want to have that kind of power at my fingertips. And when do you want it? I want it now. I want it now. <sighs> I've just lost my place. <laughs> Solomon asked the question, what did Solomon opt for? Solomon said, give me an understanding heart. Give me wisdom. Let, let, me, let me judge according to who you are. Because you are wisdom. See, wisdom is an attribute of a God. In the book of wisdom, in the book of Proverbs, she is always feminine. Uh, feminine wisdom is that deep soul felt wisdom. And so when, when, when he's asking for wisdom, what he's asking for is to be guided by a power beyond our own egoic power, our own intelligent power, a power that sees beyond the immediately. And so Solomon was, was given, given wisdom. If we do not seek wisdom, our information and power is going to destroy us. It's that serious of a thing. Why? Because power, sooner or later, if it's raw power, raw anything is going to go south. Midas had the touch. Everything Midas touched turned to gold. And he touched his own beloved daughter, who also turned to gold. Faust sold his soul for power. Oh, what does it profit a person to gain the whole world and lose their immortal soul? And yet, what is the great ethos of the world today? Follow the power and follow the money. Follow the money. You know, we smile and we laugh at it, but it's true. What's going to give me the greatest return for my investment? And I want my return now. I'm not looking in the long term. I'm looking for the next quarter. Follow the money. And anytime we go for that, we are going to lose. Dorian Gray wanted eternal youth. We saw how that worked out for him. So what do we seek? I really believe this is an existential crisis where if we are either we are either going to figure it out and be wise people or we're not. Martin Luther King put it this way and it was really prescient. We are either going to learn how to live together as brothers and sisters or we're going to perish alone as fools. And so the question is, how do we get it? How do we get that wisdom? And the answer almost seems too easy, but it really is the answer. You ask for it. Solomon asked for it. We are called to ask for it. In Matthew 7, 7 and in Luke 2, Jesus says, Ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and the door shall be opened to you. Ask for it. You see, there's only one thing God can give. God cannot give us a little red wagon. Or when we say, oh Lord, won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz? You might not get it. What can God give? God gives God. God gives God's wisdom. God gives God's power. God gives God's mercy. God gives God's love. That's the only thing in the purse of Jesus. 
That's the only thing that is there. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and everything else will be given to you besides. And so we've got these wonderful parables today. And the parables about the fact that, that there is a treasure and it is hidden. Well, it's hidden inside of each and every one of us. And it's much greater than gold. We hold a treasure not made of gold. We hold it in earthen vessels. We hold it in our fragility, in our brokenness. Oh, but it's there. And we are called to sell everything we have in order to gain that. What does it profit to gain the world and to lose your soul? Nothing. Nothing. Oh, it's the pearl of great price. But when you discover it, you sell everything else in order to get that pearl of great price. What is it? Nothing less than the divine presence dwelling in each and every one of us. And if we can figure that out and then practice it, that's wisdom. Wisdom's an action. Then we can be saved. If we can't, I'm afraid most bets are off. No, they did a, a Harvard study I was reading about, and it's the oldest longevity study, I think, in, in the world. And it began when young Harvard students back in the 20s, and it followed them all the way through their lives and in what they did and what, what made them successful and what made them fall and, and what made them happy and what made them really wonderful people and, and what did not. And they came up finally, and, and they're working in the second generation right now. It's literally thousands and thousands of people. And they came up with, with one thing more important than anything else. And it wasn't, you know I'm going to say, it wasn't riches, it wasn't fame, it wasn't power. Those are passing away, those are going to die when we die. What was it? What was it? Everyone who saw themselves as successful and happy and fulfilled were in wonderful, deep, profound holy relationships. Life is about relationships. That's as obvious as the nose on our face. We talk about it all the time, but we don't always live wisely to make those work. And so we find brothers and sisters at loggerheads with each other, and parents and children at loggerheads with each other. Those who are able to work through those difficulties with those beautiful relationships find that they've got an incredibly beautiful and full life. So if indeed those relationships are critical, what is the most important relationship that we can possibly have? Our relationship with wisdom. Our relationship with God. The pearl of great price. The hidden treasure. Oh, seek that first and everything will blossom from that. Can you imagine? Can you imagine a world where we lived that wisdom? Where we were able to be not only in good relationship with our family, with our friends, but with our community and with our world. What's causing all the pain and suffering today in the world? Broken relationships between nations. Broken relationships between people. We are, we are being satisfied for things that are going to pass away. We are called, and we prayed it in our opening prayer today, to seek the things that last forever. That's what lasts forever. The relationships of the people we love, of the world we love. Our future could be either utterly bright or a total disaster. There are those who are predicting that we are not going to make it, that we are on a self-destructive course because, well, the immediate gratification is too easy. But the wisdom of God lasts forever. We are called to be the daughters and sons of God, sharing and living and working towards that wisdom.